Tonight, temperatures soar around the region. First Queensland has received the COVID jab. The cotton industry rebounds after a tough year. And a vaccine rollout for our koalas. Across the Darling Downs and beyond, this is 7 News with Rob Ruff and Joanne Desmond. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Good evening. It's been a scorching start to the week as temperatures soar into the high 30s across our region today. A cool change is on the way, but it could also bring severe thunderstorms. Lapping up the sunshine, the local pool proved a popular way to beat the heat around Toowoomba today. Very hot, very humid, um, a little bit windy, but it's a very hot wind. The mercury peaked at 34.7 degrees in the Garden City this afternoon. Too hot for us, we come to the pool. Just uh, getting out of the heat, keeping it nice and cool in uh, here at Marlin Bay uh, pools. A low intensity heat wave is sweeping across the region. This really hot weather is thanks to a big continental air mass. So that's a lot of hot air which has been sitting out over central Australia, getting really hot and really dry in recent days. Gundawindi, Miles and Dolby reached 38.2 degrees. It edged closer to 40 around St George and Charleville. When it comes to things like the current heat wave that we're experiencing, our heat related call outs will increase dramatically. But a cool change is expected from tomorrow. This chance of showers and thunderstorms, including the possibility of severe storms, will migrate further to the west. Between 5 and 20 mils is expected, but isolated showers could see some areas get up to 30 mils. There's a risk of dry lightning strikes across the uh, Granite Belt and across the Darling Downs, which could start bushfires. The message is to prepare now for rain, hail or shine. Hope Wilson, 7 News. Toowoomba doctors are encouraging their patients to get the COVID-19 vaccination when it's rolled out to the public. Healthcare workers on the Gold Coast were the first to receive the jab today and aged care residents in Toowoomba are next in line. After 14 long months, emergency service workers were able to receive a COVID jab. All right, you ready? Yes. <laughs> Zoe Parks is a registered nurse on the Gold Coast. Today, she was the first person in Queensland to get the vaccine. Today, we make history by having the first vaccination here, which is a new weapon in the fight against COVID-19. One down, uh, four million minus one to go. Definitely feel safer going to work now. 180 Queenslanders have now been vaccinated. Aged care residents in Toowoomba will be next. So everyone else just needs to stay calm and we'll be updating uh, each week and each month about when uh, your particular cohort will be vaccinated. While thousands of anti-vaxxers took to the streets around the country at the weekend ahead of the rollout... They are coercing us into a medical procedure and we don't stand for it. Medical professionals say it would be foolish not to be vaccinated. The vaccines are safe. They have been proven safe. They have been assessed by our regulator and, in fact, tested in many places around the world. And doctors will be encouraging their patients to get a jab. We think that it's the role of all doctors in Queensland and, in fact, the entire country to be encouraging people to uh, get the vaccine when their name comes up. Toowoomba has been, been 201 days now um, free. Uh, from well, since the last coronavirus case. Uh, so we, we're not designated a hotspot, and that's a very good thing. Kathleen O'Connor, 7 News. Two thieves have been caught on camera stealing copper from the Ergon depot in Toowoomba. But police were hot on their trail as they tried to haul the product away. The dog squad arrived at the Hampton Street site, picked up their scent and tracked them down. They were arrested nearby. We can see the most minute detail of the person, what they're wearing, and also the vehicles they arrived to site in as well. Ergon says it's up security after thefts began increasing. Well, the cotton industry is forecast to rebound following a near record low last year. This season's crop is expected to be four times larger than 2020, with a value of close to $1.5 billion. As harvest time approaches, things are starting to look up for our cotton farmers. Yeah, certainly last year was a, a really bad year, but this year we've got a, a good to slightly above average crop. But while the industry is bouncing back, 
growers aren't becoming complacent. This season, uh, looking a lot brighter, but but still nowhere near fantastic. But uh, we're expecting a crop of around about two and a half million bales. The La Nina didn't bring as much rain to the region as expected. The way I describe it is we're now getting paddock-sized storms instead of area-sized storms these days. So you can get a storm on your farm and your next door neighbour will miss out completely. As China continues to boycott Australia's cotton, other Asian markets have picked up the slack. There's a lot of um, spinning mills in Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, Bangladesh is another place, and India. And with the global price holding strong at $600 a bale, the highest rate since 2018, that spells good news for local farmers. But you won't hear many predictions beyond this season. Really a bit too early, early to call. I'd imagine at, at worst it'll be about the same as this season, but, you know, with, with some decent rain, um, you know, it can certainly grow a lot, lot more. Sam McManus, 7 News. Vandals have set fire to a newly built public toilet in Queen's Park, causing hundreds of dollars worth of damage. A plastic traffic cone was set alight in the cubicle before the culprits fled. Firefighters were called to extinguish the blaze just before seven last night. Council says the vandalism is disgusting. When we have to divert funds from other projects to fixing those at the ratespayers' expense, that's where I see the problem. The cost of the damage is still to be worked out, but Council says taxpayers will have to foot the bill. A growing number of city slickers are hitting the reset button and making that sea or tree change by moving into rural and regional areas. Experts believe we're on the cusp of a regional renaissance, with COVID reshaping where people live and how they work. Tony Sisson was born and raised in regional Queensland, but spent most of her adult life in big cities until late last year. It's just a much more relaxed lifestyle, I guess. Tony made the decision to move the family back to Cairns from Brisbane after having a baby and hasn't looked back. We have a house that overlooks the mountains and we get to see the, you know, the birds and the bats every night. And she's not alone. One in five city dwellers is looking to move to the regions, half within the next year. Our cities have been experiencing growing pains for years and they're unable to keep up with the, the infrastructure needs. Brisbane people are actually the most stressed out of all the city areas. Those surveyed say less traffic and a lower cost of living were the main reasons for wanting to go regional. But COVID has also accelerated the trend. Now some of these people that are shifting here now because they're mobile, many of them will continue in the current roles they're in and they bring a skill set that hitherto has been um, harder to find. And this is just the beginning. I think we're at the cusp of a regional renaissance and we all need to prepare. We're here for the, for the long term now, so, yeah, we're... Um not keen to do the move again. <laughs> Matthew Carstunen, 7 News. While all eyes are on the COVID vaccine rollout this week, there's another jab making headlines in the animal world. Researchers will soon begin an immunisation program for our koalas in the hope of bringing struggling populations back from the brink. Chlamydia has plagued koalas for decades, causing blindness, infections, infertility and, all too often, a painful, drawn-out death. It's taken 10 years to develop a vaccine to combat the silent killer. We've done three or four large trials, because these are field trials we do. It's very similar to the COVID vaccines. It's at the same sort of stage, if you like. Trial results in the Moreton Bay region were impressive. We were able to turn a population that was otherwise on the way down to one that's on the way back up. Now, with the help of more than $98,000 in state government funding, the University of the Sunshine Coast can roll out the vaccine on a bigger scale. The first jabs will be administered at the Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital. We're, we're hoping across a whole year we'll basically vaccinate the majority of koalas coming through. It's a great collaboration uh, amongst two really important uh, conservation groups. The animals are also the focus of a $92,000 grant to Australia Zoo to fit rehabilitated koalas with collars so they can be monitored once released into the wild. This is um, an incredible and wonderful moment in time to be able to determine how well the koalas are doing, to see the effects of the vaccines. And to help save an Australian icon, Jessica Ross, 7 News. And ahead tonight in 7 News, a decade on, local firefighters recall the heartbreak of the Christchurch earthquake. And the partnership helping animals find their forever home.
bank manager. But now it's time for my next challenge. This is ultimate tag. They are the hunters, and our players are their prey. Go! The longer they last, the further they'll go. It's like you're a little baby and a T-Rex is just running after you. We hear us... Ultimate Tag, coming soon to Seven. With the world turned on its head, many of us aren't feeling like ourselves. But what happens in your head doesn't have to stay there. There are things we can do to feel better, like staying connected, keeping busy, and being active. How's your head today? For info, advice and professional support, visit headtohealth.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Square up and roll out at Massey Ferguson with our high-quality round and square baler range. Get consistent high-density bales and value. Save with early order offers to secure your baler for next season. Get ahead of the hay. Square up and roll out at Massey Ferguson. Let me be great. Let me be witty. Let me be so dirty in every state and city. How about let you do a double take? I don't need your money. I don't need your credit. I'm a superwoman. I let you watch me play. Hey, psst, Nina, there's more where that came from. I'm filled with hair, soap and dirt you can't reach. New Easy Off Drain Turbo Gel's powerful formula quickly powers through tough clogs and eliminates odors. New Easy Off Drain Turbo Gel. We live in a world where communication and connectivity is critical for your business. Boost your mobile signal with PowerTech and get connectivity coverage where you need it most. PowerTech, your connectivity solution experts. Hannah's summer sale is now on with hot savings store-wide. Grab a bargain with 20 to 50% off seasonal summer fashions and stylish footwear for the whole family. From leading global and national suppliers. Plus, decorate your home with our discounted range of Manchester homewares and gift lines. You'll find hot prices and hot styles at Hannah's summer sale. All your popular brands under one roof. With Hannah's Toowoomba, the place to be for quality and service. Thanks for joining us here on 7. USQ's Vice-Chancellor Professor Gerald D. McKenzie will continue to lead the university until 2025. Professor McKenzie says the university is in a strong position as first semester classes began today. So we're looking at opportunities for growth, transformation and innovation and we think there's a really positive future ahead for us. Chancellor John Dornbush made the announcement today thanking Professor McKenzie for her strong leadership through the pandemic. RSPCA volunteers have saved more than 1,000 unwanted pets from death row over the past year. The animal welfare workers collect abandoned animals from the pound and give them a second chance at life. It's heartbreaking to imagine what could have been their fate. 90% of the animals from council come to us. Uh, unfortunately, some of the animals aren't rehomeable. Charlie, the six-year-old bull terrier, has been here for more than six months after being abandoned by his owner and left to die. A lot of them are strays, um, and then people just don't want them back, um, So, which is, which is a little bit sad. Most of the discarded pets like Luna and Dolby are found on the street or dropped off as strays. The RSPCA and Toowoomba Council have created a new program to help save these animals from possible death. Volunteers collect the animals at the pound twice a week and take them to a vet for treatment so dogs like Charlie can find a new home. The beauty of this program is that they actually look to rehome them uh, under the agreement that no pet is actually put down or euthanised. And while many people are adopting cute puppies, the RSPCA says it's the growing number of cats that desperately need new homes. If we don't take them, um, oh, then where do they go? Kathleen O'Connor, 7 News. Two Darling Downs firefighters say they'll never forget the scenes that confronted them in Christchurch 10 years ago today. They were part of an international recovery effort after a 6.3 magnitude earthquake struck the city. A city reduced to rubble as an earthquake rocked Christchurch to its core. Come on, keep going. Come on, guys. When you see a city as big as Christchurch with huge skyscrapers, some leaning to the left, some leaning to the right, seats that are 
streets that are empty, nobody in the streets, and just damage everywhere. Yeah, it was it was quite a surreal experience. On January 22, 2011, the heart of New Zealand's South Island was broken. <laughs> Coming across things like a credit card still in the swipe card machine, knives and forks still on the plates, because it, it occurred at lunchtime. Local firefighters Tony Goose and Stuart Land were deployed within 24 hours of the 6.3 quake. Their task, search and rescue, focusing on the CTV building. It was a six, seven storey structure that had pancaked down. 115 people died in that, in that collapse. It was a devastating result with more than 10,000 buildings damaged. Hopefully we were able to give some closure to some families over there um, in recovering their loved ones. Exactly one week later, emergency crews gathered to remember the 185 people who died. We surrounded the building in one big band of people. Just to remember. A memory still raw a decade on. What I take away from that is the appreciation of life. Um, life can end so quickly. It was such a, a massive event. Hope Wilson, 7 News. Yeah, Tony and Stuart, thanks for sharing that with us. Obviously very emotional. OK, no, sport mate and diggers looking good in their cricket game, mate. Yeah, they are, Bruffy. In the battle of third against fourth, Northern Brothers are in a great position to extend the gap on railways. More on that next. And a bad weekend for our remaining teams in soccer's FFA Cup. Can you smell that? Smell what? The smell of victory is in the air. The Holy Moly Grand Final is here. Oh, Servo, I'm excited. Australia's 10 champions have returned to Brisbane as the greatest hole in mini golf history is unveiled. Where someone will putt a hole in one. Yeah! And win $100,000. The Holy Moly Grand Final. Tonight, 7.30 on 7. Here we go again. Time to feed the Red Rise Creek. Just like last year and the year before that. On April 1st, health insurance premiums get bigger. But what if this time you didn't feed the Red Rise Creek? and just compared a bunch of great health funds with iSelect. Hmm. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13, 19, 20. Oh, it reminds me. Better book in for a service. Glad I got cap price servicing. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Eh, I'm still feeling it. Get the new Hilux 4x4 SR5 with free on roads. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. What is money for? If not for the place you call home. Or your very own business. We can help with whatever matters most. Nap. More than money. If you're quick, Metricon's Fast Track Guarantee can still help you qualify for the $15,000 Home Builder Grant with a building contract in as little as one week from deposit. But you'll have to hurry as the $15,000 grant ends March 31st. And if you qualify for the first homeowner, home builder and regional grants, you can get this four-bed, two-bath Hamptons home for under $145,000. Love where you live. Metricon. On April 1st, health insurance premiums get bigger. But what if this time you didn't feed the rate rise creep and just compared a bunch of great health funds with iSelect? Compare, select and save with iSelect on 13, 19, 20. Tonight, the biggest action show on television is 911. There's someone else down here. Tonight on 7. Welcome back to 7 News. Our three remaining teams in the nationwide FFA Cup have been eliminated from the tournament following a bad weekend of round three action. It all started with Willowburn, who were outclassed at home, losing 5-0 to Gold Coast Club Southport. 
It was a tight tussle from end to end in the first half as Willowburn and Southport battled it out in round three of the competition. We didn't know what to expect going in from these boys and, um, you know, they turned up. They're a good team to play against and they were fair and, you know, they challenge hard like we do. They play similar football. Down 1-0 at the break, the Magpies knew they'd be in for a challenge. We had opportunities, they had opportunities. Um, unfortunately, they definitely wanted the game more in that second half and it showed this with the scoreline. The Southport side piled on the pressure in the second as the home side began to crumble. Yeah, eventually we were able to sort of get a bit more of a foot on it and control it a bit more, um, which was pleasing. The away side landed four unanswered goals, pushing through to claim a 5-0 victory. We knew that was going to happen. Um, cup football, you know, everyone's always going to put it in. Um, but we knew we just had to keep working hard and eventually the, the quality would come through. We're knocked out of the cup for now, but we'll go into the rest of the season and, and we'll, you know, we'll keep enjoying our football and, and get better as the year goes on. In other games, Rockville battled it out against Caloundra in a game that went down to the wire. They fell 2-1 in the dying stages of the match. While West Wanderers' FFA Cup hopes were shattered following a 7-0 loss to St George Willowong FC. Desmond and Dickerson, 7 News. In Toowoomba Cricket, Northern Brothers Diggers are in the box seat of their round four clash against Highfields Railways following a strong opening day. The third place Diggers will resume on two for 48 this Saturday after their bowling attack knocked over the fourth place Railways for just 140. It's a match Highfields Railways need to win to stay in touch with the top three in Toowoomba cricket. But the start hasn't been ideal. Diggers have bowled pretty well today. We've uh, struggled to score some runs. Sebastian Knoll took four for 33, with Connor Philp taking a further three wickets to knock over Railways for 140. The third place Diggers finished the day two for 48, needing just 93 runs to secure first innings points and move further into all but end Railways finals hopes. At Middle Ridge Park, the second place Metropolitan East are in a strong position against the Southern District's Magpies. Skipper Liam Brown led the way with an unbeaten 86, with the side four for 180 at stumps. We've really been trying to work hard on our uh, batting uh, over the last couple of weeks. It's, it's sort of been hot and cold, so uh, the effort today is we're really happy with. And at Heritage Oval, it was a terrible start for University against the ladder leaders. West had them reeling at four for eight before Mitchell Bork stepped in with a vital 117, pushing his side to a total of 170. It's awesome to see, um, see the guys get into form and whack a few runs, especially when you're working hard at training. And... Dolby's Ellie Johnston made her first class debut with the Queensland Fire at the weekend. She took the field alongside oh, Toowoomba's Georgia Vol in their WNCL clash against South Australia. Vol opened with 21 while Johnston made just two as the side set 170 for victory. South Australia then chased down the total in the 38th over with eight wickets in hand. Vespina Dickerson, 7 News. Toowoomba's Rodney Pimenta claimed his first win in this year's modifying sedan series over the weekend. Racing in Saturday night's Mayor's Cup at the High Tech Oil Speedway, the local racer was never in doubt. After taking the early lead, Pimenta was able to hold his position and fend off advances from other drivers on his way to victory. He now leads the series by 11 points. In great form, that's for sure. And that's mm. it for sport tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Nath. Right, we'll stay with us after the break. Livio joins us with all the weather details. season begins with the Mount Panorama 500, Saturday from noon, here on 7 and 7 Plus. When's it my turn? Soon. Fantastic Furniture. Find your fantastic. Australia is working hard to ensure we all have access to safe, effective and free COVID-19 vaccines, which will give us the protection to go about our everyday lives. The COVID-19 vaccines are being assessed carefully by independent clinical experts to ensure all potential vaccines meet Australia's high safety and quality standards. After vaccines are approved, they'll be rolled out, going to those most in need of protection first. To keep up to date, visit health.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra.
Everything you touch turns to savings with Aldi's permanently low prices. Checkout keeps you on your toes, though. That's good, different. A distracting new deal every week in February. This week, get 20% off any order over $10. Order today only on the My Maccas app. Thousands of retirees have taken control of their retirement. With a lifetime income stream, they enjoy a guaranteed income for life. Understand how you could retire with confidence with our tool at challenger.com.au. Try to stay in the lines, honey. <laughs> Look, two lines. Lucy! Please stay behind the yellow line. It won't be long. We spend our lives looking at lines. Don't miss the ones that matter most. Take care. Stay line aware. My beautiful fiance. Pulse, pulse, pulse in my vein beat. We need to watch him. If you uncovered a scandal that could destroy your friend's happiness, what is it you're not telling me? Would you tell them? What is it? Home and Away, tonight on 7. Good evening, Livia Regano with tonight's weather. In Queensland, we rely heavily on our prevailing ocean trade winds to keep us cool in summer, or at least keep us from burning alive. We lost those winds yesterday, and they won't be back until Wednesday, so we'll just have to patiently endure the crippling heat for another 24 hours. Would you believe the coolest max temp I could find today was 31 degrees at Applethorpe? Spare a thought for those in Dolby and Kingaroy and Warwick who hit the high 30s today. Let's look now at the satellite loop. You can still see there's a lot of thick cloud remaining across the uh, north and northwest of Queensland, although that's starting to abate. There's some, still some pretty heavy showers out there. They're weakening and contracting north by tomorrow. There won't be much left. A couple of thunderstorms started erupting on the southern downs this afternoon as well, and we're watching those. Uh, tomorrow is a better opportunity for severe thunderstorms, though, in the southeastern quadrant of Queensland. Let's look at today's chart now. This most unusual situation, which was well forecast by our favourite models, a low-pressure system off the New South Wales coast. You get that in winter normally, and the clockwise, clockwise winds, I should say, produce westerlies, which at this time of year are the hottest winds you can get. And they're basically eating up most of Queensland. On tomorrow, chart. Not much different. The western trough comes a bit closer. The bottom section starts to move up the coast in the form of a southerly buster. Another very hot day ahead of that trough. On the outlook chart, that southerly buster reaches the east coast in the form of a more moderate east-southeasterly change, cooling things down. Now, the latest from the Weather Bureau. The Darling Downs and Granite Belt forecast. Afternoon showers and thunderstorms potentially severe and hopefully with some good rain. 37 degrees for Dolby, Gundawindi 39, Toowoomba 32, Warwick 33. For the southeast coast, afternoon showers and storms again, possibly severe but only inland. Gatton reaching 36 degrees, Ipswich 34 and Brisbane 32. Looking ahead for Toowoomba, southeasterly trade winds return on Wednesday, cooling us back to average, thank goodness, but also bringing some decent midweek rainfall before showers ease on Thursday. For Warwick, again, our best chance of rain is probably on Wednesday as it comes through. Oh, uh, that's uh, apart from tomorrow, which of course are the biggest storms. After that, it just trickles down again. Dolby the same. Tuesday and Wednesday are our best opportunities. Storms coming through, they'll start to taper off and temperatures about 33 after that. That's all for this evening, my friends. Pleasure to have your company once again and thank you for watching 7 Local Weather. I'll be back tomorrow with more. Hope you can join me. Now it's back to the team. We've got a wonderful mate. Thank you. Thanks for your company. We'll catch you tomorrow night. And just a reminder, you can watch a replay of 7 News on the 7 Plus app. From all of us here, enjoy your evening. Good night. Good night. Tonight on 7 News...